welcome everybody and thanks for joining me tonight um, to talk about health problems in colonians, which are tortoises and turtles. Um, some of you may have joined uh, the pet webinars um, a few months back, which I did a similar topic on, but I'm going to try not to um, you know, do the same lecture. I'll try and go into some more detail that pertains to veterinary treatment of, of these animals and, and how to diagnose common problems um, and kind of offer advice on husbandry and nutrition and things to, to owners if you're not too familiar about the basics of, of keeping um, gelonians. Sometimes it can be good to, to kind of brush up those, those topics and uh, sort of impress your clients that you do know what you're speaking about. So I touched on the kind of um, most the eight most common conditions that we see in tortoise and turtle patients um, in the in the pet webinars a few months back, and those would be um, the following: post hibernation anorexia, very very common um, when tortoises are emerging from hibernation and um, just refuse to feed, and there's a multitude of reasons why that may be, um, which we need to sort of determine from a, a very ill patient um, when it presents to us several weeks after emerging from hibernation. In many cases, um, ill thrift is is a really common reason for uh, an animal um, such as this to present to the vet um, and we'll go through some of the common reasons. Most often are mistakes um, due to chronic um, issues with husbandry or nutrition on the part of the owner and we have to be quite diplomatic in how we um, identify those and, and um, recommend suggestions to change them um, because tortoise owners in particular I would say um, often can be very set in their ways in terms of how they keep their animal and what they've done for years and years and years has never caused a problem up to now it can be difficult you know to change their mindset and and talk to them about improving husbandry or improving nutrition then uh, thirdly we get on to hypocalcemia and, and metabolic bone disease um, kind of category and that's something unfortunately that we still see um, we really really shouldn't see that in in today's um, patients because the equipment and um, knowledge you know has come on in leaps and bounds on how to keep these animals correctly but unfortunately a lot of people do um, skimp on that or a lot of people are following old ways of, of husbandry that, that lead to problems when they buy a new baby tortoise for instance instance or a, an aquatic turtle and um, you know are following traditional advice on how to keep those animals. Um, then we move on to quite wide area of infections and abscesses and we'll talk about how they're um, treated and what the most common um, presentations are. Prolapses and egg binding which you know can be interlinked uh, and then finally in um, aquatic turtles we'll talk about a uh, specific nutritional disease thiamine or vitamin B1 deficiency and then uh, talk a little bit at the end about shell and limb injuries and, and what we can do. You see this is a, a tortoise on the right that was brought in to me a couple of times now for a beak trim. Uh, it's kind of got chronic um, nutritional issues. Um, it lost its, its back legs uh, due to a fox attack I believe some 15 or 20 years ago in this rather crude uh, wheelie kind of um, cart was attached to its shell which I've been trying to convince the owners that we need to update because at the moment the tortoise can only go in a, a forward or reverse direction. Um, it can't turn on its axis unfortunately um, and it's got a few bigger issues as well but sometimes you know um, it does take time it takes a few consults with a, a tortoise owner and that could be over the course of a year or, or two years potentially because these animals are not um, presented to the vet very often. Um, traditionally, I think a lot of owners decide that, or in their experience, they bring the tortoise to the vet once a year for a multivitamin injection before it hibernates or after it hibernates, and that's the, the last we see of them all year. So um, there is a real opportunity, I guess, to, to improve the welfare of certain animals out there if we engage the owners correctly. So Chelonia or Calonia, depending on how you want to pronounce it, it just means shelled reptiles. It includes tortoises, turtles, terrapins, um, sea turtles, and the terminology does vary um, in, in what we call certain species from region to region. Um, in the US, uh, turtle is commonly you know, used for tortoises. Um, turtle in the kind of biological literature um, generally means a marine species so sea turtles in particular and then the freshwater aquatic turtles um, per se are divided into terrapins, uh, sliders, cooters, different, um, different classifications of freshwater aquatic turtle and then tortoises are the real terrestrial um, animals that you know millions of years of evolution has produced and uh, many many species with, with varying requirements and more and more species I think looking at um, 
reptile exp expos and looking at reptile forums online and things like that, I think there has been an upsurge in popularity of these um, animals. So we're going to see more and more. But not only are we going to see more um, animals you know, in number, we're going to see a wider variety of species um, coming to the vets because they are quite niche and people do concentrate on, you know, collectors kind of do concentrate on uh, specific branches of them. And, you know, I have a few clients that have, you know, 20 or 30 different um, Chelonian species in their collection. So um, you need to be kind of aware of their, their individual requirements. Um, traditionally or historically, I would say, you know, there has been huge welfare issues in um, in the treatment and um, the hobby of, of keeping tortoises and turtles in the UK. And one of the big things that I would see and that, that we need to sort of change these days is the um, old habit, I guess, in the kind of 60s, 70s, 80s, that where a lot of Greek tortoises, adult tortoises were imported in vast numbers and um, many of them died but many of them were sort of condemned to a life in a soggy British back garden. and when an animal has survived in a, a family for you know 40 years 50 years potentially um, upwards then it's very hard to convince an owner when they bring it in that actually maybe we're not doing things you know 100% correctly or we're allowing the animal to survive but we're not allowing the animal to thrive and there is a big difference there so there has been a big welfare issue acutely when um, masses of these animals were imported and, and thousands and thousands of them died um, but also I think even nowadays, um, some of these animals are approaching um, geriatric um, category, and you know it's easy to say, well, my tortoise has lived 30 years, fine, just the way I'm doing it. But there's a few factors that have, uh, you know, started to influence their decline and started to impact on the welfare. One being that the weather has is changed in the last 10 or 15 years, and the summers that we used to have, you know, are not not here anymore. We're having less reliable summers, and these are Mediterranean animals. They're they're you know designed to have months on end of of dry hot weather, and we're just not getting that. So we're seeing big pro problems in them um, nowadays when they have no access to indoor heating or lighting. The second um, historic welfare issue in in these animals really was um, in the kind of late 80s, early 90s with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle craze um, when masses of um, terrapins, red-eared terrapins normally, um, were imported for the pet trade and they were sold in you know little plastic dishes with a, a palm tree. I'm ashamed to say I, I had one um, and later read up more about them and, and started to keep them better. But um, I also had many kids from the neighbourhood whose parents got fed up cleaning out these um, dirty animals water bowl um, kind of surrendered them over to me and at one point I had 11 uh, terrapins in a bathtub in the in the garage um, you know that people were just handing over and there was no homes for so there was the huge um, welfare issue with those they were kept without UV light they were fed on a, a dried shrimp mix which was basically you know minimal nutritional value at all and um, they often died a few months after purchase um, but that was a bit a big welfare concern and oh, luckily um, the legislation has been changed but um, there are ways for the pet industry to get around that. Um, red ear terrapins were banned um, on the import list and uh, they've started to import yellow bellied terrapins instead so um, they've got around that a little bit so there's a, still a welfare issue with uh, cheap pets especially sold in, in sort of um, fish or aquatic retailers um, and they're selling turtles and, and people just don't want to invest in um, the size tanks filtration lighting and heating that they actually require so there's still um, big welfare issues to be seen. And um, also another uh, topic that is pertinent, I suppose, was um, a public health issue, that there was a lot of salmonella scares and um, public health concern about having, you know, reptile pets in the home. And a lot of the um, blame, you know, was put on turtles carry salmonella and, and um, you shouldn't have them as pets, you definitely shouldn't have them as children's pets. Well, a lot of pet reptiles um, can carry salmonella of various um, serovirus and types and um, some of them are pathogenic and some of them are not so much but certainly when you keep an animal in um, cold conditions and incorrect conditions and it starts to become sick, it will become a, a massive shedder of these organisms and therefore the infection risk to the, the child or, or the person who's keeping it does increase. So that's something to keep in mind. So I've 
talked a little bit about um, the sort of two main groups that we see in the UK. The first group being aquatic species of um, of tortoise and or 